Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gary Tubo here bringing you another Minecraft Forward 2 tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be building the 150cm Flak Scheinwerfer. Developed in the late 1930s, the Flak Scheinwerfer 34 and 37, Flak Scheinwerfer translated to Flak Searchlight, used 150cm 59 inch diameter parabolic glass reflectors with an output of 990 million uh, candelas. The system was powered by a 24 kilowatt generator based around a 51 horsepower 8 cylinder engine, given a current of 200 amps at 110 volts. The searchlight was attached to the generator by a 200 meter cable. The system had a detection range of about 8 kilometers, or about 5 miles, for targets at an altitude of between 4,000 and 5,000 meters, or 13,000 and 16,000 feet. The system could be made mobile using two sets of special trailer 104 units, one for the searchlight and one for the generator. It required a crew of seven to operate it. The searchlight could be traversed 360 degrees and elevated from negative 12 degrees through the vertical to negative 12 degrees on the other side. Early war tactics for the searchlight deployment had the searchlights forward of the flak guns in a zone of preparation, laid out in a grid with five kilometers between each light. Sound locators deployed with the searchlights helped them find targets. Later, these were replaced with radar systems. 61 fixed uh, quadruple 150 millimeter mounts were produced in an effort to extend the range of the 150 uh, centimeter searchlights. However, these proved unsuccessful. So yeah, a really interesting piece of equipment. Uh, we all kind of know the iconic scenes and stuff from movies or just in general where during World War II you have the air raid sirens go off, you have the big f spotlights pop up in the sky trying to illuminate the targets, and then the, the flak starts going off. So kind of a iconic piece of equipment in that sense, but something that's really overlooked. Um, I've never done a tutorial for a flak searchlight or kind of any kind of searchlights in this manner um, from World War II, so I think it's kind of fun to, you know, finally kind of visit this. Um, I did have this design present on the flak tower, though this is a bit of a revamped version, so if you did build the flak tower, you may want to go back and maybe uh, revamp the spotlights a little bit with this uh, new design, but yeah, overall, really nice design for it. Um, I think it came out really good and is going to make an awesome addition to any kind of frontline type, or well, not really exactly frontline, but just any kind of like little uh, scenes or anything you may be doing where you have a German base where they're trying to have spotlights up for their flak guns to hit targets or something like that. So definitely a really cool design, and I think it came out really good, and hopefully you guys do enjoy it as well. Um, but anyways, going ahead and taking a look at it, uh, we have in front of us the deployed version. As I mentioned, it could be put on a, a trailer, um, which attached to it much very similar to like the Flak 88. Um, and I do have that design, which will be coming out as a tutorial later on, later on in the future. Um, but yeah, I think it came out really cool and is uh, definitely pretty cool. And this is just the deployed standalone version without the trailer. Um, anyways, we have the big spotlight section itself here, basically the main iconic piece of it. Some really good detail around it and it looks really nice. We have uh, two operators here to both sides. I imagine these are probably for changing the degree of it. So uh, angling upward and all that stuff. And then we also have a C on the back here, which I imagine maybe is for, could be for angling the, the gun or could be, or I could say the gun, but it could be used for angling the spotlight or maybe for turning the whole platform as a whole. Not 100% sure on what each one of these in particular does, but my guess it would be one of those two. Either these two guys turn the, uh, basically spin the gun or spin the light and then this guy controls the uh, elevation of it or these two guys control the elevation this guy turns the the traverse of it so one of those two uh figurations for sure but lots of good detail on it um and i think it looks really good <laughs> hope you guys do enjoy it as well um anyways let's go and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first uh layer layer number one all right guys going ahead and moving into our first layer be going ahead and start with layer number one for layer one to go ahead and get started with for this build, we're going to be going ahead and placing down a stone brick stair like so. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab coming off that stair going forward. We're then going to go ahead and go from the stair over one, two, and three stone top slabs, another stone brick stair over here, and a stone top slab coming off the front of the stair. From this, we're going to go ahead and go to the middle space here of this row three of stone, and we're going to place down a stone top slab like that. After that's done behind the stairs, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a iron trap door to both sides like that with a row of three of stone top slabs across the middle. From that point there, we're going to place down a second row of three of stone top slabs going across and then one stone top slab coming off the middle block followed by a skeleton skull to both sides. From that, we're going to place down a stone brick upside down stair, iron trap door to both ends, and then a stone or a skeleton skull coming off the stone brick upside down stair. 
after that's all complete, that is going to do it there for the base of the gun. Or, I keep saying the gun. <laughs> I'm so used to building the anti-aircraft guns and stuff like that that can't uh, keep forgetting it for searchlight. But that's going to do it over there for the base there for the searchlight. And with that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number two. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to go ahead and get started with, we're going to place down a stone uh, block right here on top of this one, followed by a skill or a stone stair here to both sides like so. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall coming off the backs here of these stairs and then coming off the andesite wall itself. We're going to place down a dark carpet fence gate opened up toward the wall like this to both sides. Once that's done, we're going to go to the front here, go to this stone block. We're going to place down a dark oak fence gate opened up toward the stone block itself, like this on the front here. Redstone appeared to both sides with the notches flicked out to the sides like so. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then place down a iron trap door on top of these two here to both sides, and then an air brick stair right there in the middle. After that's all done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a skeleton skull to both sides like so, or a wither skeleton skull like that. And then we want to go ahead and then place down a stone slab like that and the stone slab is only going to be located here on the left side so only on the left side the stone slab and then we're just going to place down a dark roof fence gate come off it like so uh once that's done go into the middle space here we're going to place down a dark oak fence gate coming off the front of the stair opened up toward it and then we're just going to place down a redstone repeater with the notches far apart as we can get them like that to both sides with that done uh we want to go and then place down a dark oak fence gate here come off this one opened up toward that fence gate and we're going to go and then just place down a end rod coming off this fence gate here to the left side and the left side only. Once that's done, uh, we want to go ahead and then go to the back here. We're going to place down a redstone repeater on the stone brick stair in the middle there. And then we want to go ahead and then place down an iron trap door to both sides of it, just like that. After that's all complete there, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer number two. And this is what it should look like so far from up above. With that out of the way, that's going to do it for layer two. Let's go ahead and move into layer number three. All right, guys, moving on to our next layer, we have layer number three. For layer three to go ahead and get started with here, uh, we do want to go ahead and make sure we get ourselves some polished andesite blocks, so we will be needing those. Uh, but basically to go ahead and get started here, we're going to place down a polished andesite block here in the middle. And then we want to go ahead and place down a polished andesite uh, upside down stair like this to both sides of this block. Now coming off this upside down andesite stair, we're going to place down a narrow brick upside down stair coming off it. So this polished andesite stair turns into an upside down corner stair. The space in between the stairs, we're going to place down a light gray stained glass block, just like that. Once that's done, we want to go and then place down a skeleton skull coming off the fronts here of these narrow brick stairs. And then we want to go ahead and go to this section here. We're going to place down a polished andesite block here in the middle, and then a uh, polished andesite top slab on both sides, like so. We're going to go and then place down a iron trap door on top of this dark oak wood fence gate and we're going to place down a dark oak wood sign come off the side here at the trap door same thing over here to this side as well just like that after that's out of the way we're also going to be placing down a stone stair coming off this corner stair so this should be a corner stair as well and same thing over here just like that after that we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate coming off both sides of this polished andesite top slab followed by a item frame with a cobweb in it and same thing over here, item frame and a cobweb. After that's done, going ahead and going to the back side here, we want to go ahead and both simply just place down a stone button come off this block here. And then we want to place down a andesite wall, which is going to go ahead and go on top of this dark oak fence gate. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a uh, wither skeleton skull coming off the right side here of that andesite wall. And we want to go ahead, and, or actually, 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 my bad, it's going to be a dark oak fence, or dark sign here on the side of this andesite wall. From that, we're going to go ahead and go back with a stone slab and a dark oak wood trap door coming off that uh, stone slab, just like that. And once you have that all complete, that is going to wrap up what we have here for layer number three. With that, let's go ahead and move into our next layer, layer number four. All right, guys, go ahead and move on to our next layer. We move on to layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and place down a sea lantern here on the middle block, followed by one, two, and three, like race thing was blocks across. And then a stone bun here on both sides here with a end rod come off the middle, uh, like race thing was block. After that's done, on top of these skeleton skulls here, we're going to place down end rods going up like that. We then want to place down a polished andesite block on both sides of the sea lantern, followed by a andesite wall on top of the upside down corner stairs. 
After that's done, we're gonna place down a chiseled stone block here in the middle, and a side wall on both sides, and then a skeleton skull coming off those and the side walls. Once that's done, over here to the right side, we're gonna place down an end rod, come off this polished and side block, and then a uh, stone button over here to the left side. We're gonna go ahead and also place down a stone brick slab going coming off this end rod, like so. We're gonna go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull, which is gonna go ahead and go on the right side of the slab. And then one that goes on top of this andesite wall. Also on the side here of the slab, we're going to place down a cobweb. And in the cobweb, we're going to place down a... Or we're, on, in, we're going to place down an iron frame. And in the iron frame, we're going to place down a cobweb. And with that all complete, that is going to do it for layer 4. With that, we're going to move into our final layers, layers 5 and 6. We're going to build basically the top here of the light and pretty much finish the design off. So with that, let's move into layers 5 through 6. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number... So five through six. For these layers, they go ahead and get started with here. We're gonna place down a like brick stainless block on top of the middle here, followed by another brick stair to both sides of it, like so. From this going back, we're gonna place down an andesite corner stair here on both sides with a polished andesite block in the middle, a second polished andesite block going back, and then a polished andesite slab to both sides. Again, on the sides here, we're gonna place down a skeleton skull, followed by an end rod block, and then an air skeleton skull. And same thing is gonna be done over here to the right side as well, just like that. Once that's done, we're going to take our iron trap doors and we're going to place down one and two iron trap doors just like that on top of the two polished andesite full blocks. And with that done, that is going to complete my design for the kind of um, uh, deployed version for the 150 millimeter flax searchlight. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy this tutorial. If you guys uh, do, please. Uh, be sure to give me proper credit for it if you do end up using it on your world. This can be anything from putting a sign on the bill to to my channel or this video if this does appear in social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to use it for whatever projects you guys are working on. Overall, enjoy the build, have fun with it, and all that fun stuff. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary Before, and I'll see you guys next time.